28 year old male patient with dementia, renal impairment, history for current UTIs, and baseline creatinine is 250. Now develop the UTI, nausea, vomiting, and bloods, showing potassium 8 millimole and sodium 1 to 1, and creatinine is 700. Uh, can you interpret the findings to me? That's okay. Um, so we have um, potassium, which is high, um, sodium low, creatinine high, and I'd say that this is hyperkalemia with acute renal failure or kidney injury. Yeah. All right, so what's the why do you think that this is acute kidney injury or acute renal failure? No. So so you want to explain to me that that you know the new creatinine level is 700 mm -hmm. and the baseline creatinine is 250. So that's okay. why you think that this is an acute kidney injury at the moment uh, because the patient creatinine is, is more than double, right? Uh, so that's an acute kidney injury with electrolyte imbalance including hyponatremia and significant hyperkalemia, right? Um, I didn't ask you for the cause. You don't have to mention infection. Someone is saying in the uh, messages, antibiotic trimethoprim. I'm not really sure why it is relevant here at the moment. I know the patient is UTI, but I didn't ask you for the management yet. Uh, so interpret the findings when I say this is an acute kidney injury with hyponatremia and hyperkalemia. It could be due to uh, the related uh, urinary tract infection. Um, uh, but you want to still think of the other reasons, which could be obstructive uropathy. Uh, you have maybe a renal with benign prostatic hyperplasia in a male patient, or pre-renal, like patient with decreased oral fluid intake or urosepsis, right? So this patient has a UTI, so urosepsis could be a diagnosis, but it's still obstructive uropathy will be one of the other differentials. Okay, so how are you going to manage this patient? Um, so you, you know the nurse the nurse called you and said doctor this patient creatinine is 700 and the sodium is low and potassium is high are you able to come review the patient so what what would you like to do um i think immediately um i need to assess the hyperkalemia so i would manage the patient with the abcd approach and because the potassium is really high, I need to monitor the card at the heart. And I would also stop all the um, fluids, which contains potassium. And then I will assess like the levels of potassium. So uh, if the potassium is um, less than 6.5 millimoles, no. Really, I don't know, but six six point five. Um, I would keep calcium glucose. Well, you have the answer here. The answer is eight. You don't need to worry about what is six point five or. or okay. Not. Okay. Okay. Um. So. Yeah. Uh, calcium gluconate. Um, ten milliliters of ten percent calcium gluconate over ten minutes. And that would uh, protect the heart. And then five units of insulin in 50 milliliters of 50% dextrose for 30 minutes so that the potassium would shed, uh, shift intracellularly. And then uh, as also as albutamol nebulizer will shift the potassium intracellularly. Um, then also I would do hemolysis, no hemodialysis. And... Um, um yeah so so uh um in my opinion um, and i'm sorry to point to say that but this is this is a very unsafe answer so you just decided to manage the potassium which is fair but you ignore the sodium and you ignore the creatinine so I, I don't i don't know if you want to like do anything about this as well so in my opinion mm -hmm. th this case is not, is not about the potassium per se or the sodium per se it's about the acute kidney injury okay so you want to manage a patient with acute kidney injury and see if their, their electrolytes improve. And if they don't improve, you want to think about the electrolyte management. Because I think the, the, the major uh, cause for deranged electrolytes is, is uh, here is acute kidney injury. All right. 
So you want to say that um, I'm worried about this patient. I'll go and review them urgently. I would like to get a full HRE assessment. Most importantly, you want to check the patient observation. You want to see if they're having high temperature and low blood pressure or not, because they might be septic. And you might need to start the sepsis sex approach here. Okay. So in the C, you want to make sure they have two white pore cannula. You get all the needed bloods, including uh, um, after you know getting the temperature and everything. And then uh, you want to think about resuscitating them. However, this patient is an acute kidney injury. So I want to consider if they are an obstruction or not an obstruction. So you want to get a blood or a scan first. That's the first thing you're going to do, blood or a scan, all right, to see if they are in retention or not. If they are in retention, so they have obstructive uropathy, so you want to insert a catheter. And by doing this, all the electrolyte imbalance might be improved if they were in obstruction, okay? And if you did an ultrasound and they are not in obstruction, they are not in retention, you want to start fluid resuscitation, actually, so you want to resuscitate them if they are septic, hypotensive, and not in retention. So they have pre-renal cause. So the, the, the management here is about acute kidney injury and not about mm. the potassium and the sodium. You can mention potassium and sodium uh, mm. after you, you thought of the, we just want to hear the thought process of the management of the potassium and sodium, oh, sorry, of the acute kidney injury. And then after that, you can talk about potassium and sodium. You can say, however, I'm still very worried about potassium and sodium. Uh, for potassium, you can you can say, I can go and do an ECG, and if there's any ECG changes, I would like to start the calcium gluconate and get the medical team involved to come and help me. Because this patient is likely to need ITU as well with, you know, deranged, um, uh, you know, uh, major organ, right? So basically, they have two organs, dementia and also uh, this, uh, uh, the kidney injury as well. All right? So... And, and as you can see, we've inserted a, a catheter and it drained 15 milliliter, then four liters per day. So what do you think? Um, what happens? Is, yeah, this is known as the diuretic phase of the acute kidney injury. This happens because after correcting the um, kidney injury, the glomerular filtration rate would increase, but the distal tubules would uh, be still unable to concentrate the urine. Yeah. So so do you agree that this patient was probably in retention, given that he had 1,500 mm. ml drained after inserting the catheter? So they were, they were probably in retention. Okay. So yeah. urine retention was the main cause, really. Okay. All right. Um, mm. Why why are uremic patients also anemic? Um, um so because um erythropoietin production is decreased, um and also um because uremic patients have uh, these accumulations of nephrotoxins that would um cause uh RBC production to decrease and also um, oh, there's another condition called osteofiber self sticker yeah. uh, and um, so because of that uh, the patient would have normocytic monochromic anemia yeah so one erythropoietin to the toxins and osteoarthritis fibrosis cystica and also the RBCs will become very fragile. Okay. What are the ethical issues of dialysis in a 77 year old man with dementia? Um, since this patient has dementia and is unable to give consent, uh, I would need to take a high fork consent with two consultant signatures. Um, what type of consent are you going to use? Type 4. And why that? Because uh, he's unable to make a sound decision because he has dementia. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so 
So yeah, something that I haven't mentioned early when I was talking about the management. So you're going to focus on acute kidney injury and you would like to mention that uh, given that the patient potassium is, is more than 6. Point, was more than 6.5, you would consider dialysis and you will get an, an ABG as well uh, or a VBG to look at uh, their pH. And if they are very acidotic, less than 7.2, again, dialysis will be the right answer, all right? Uh, and that's why there is a question at the end about uh, dialysis. So you're going to mention the same manner. You're going to go do an A to E approach, uh, getting a temperature, getting blood pressure, and um, thinking about inserting a catheter if they are in retention, which I think they are, uh, et cetera, et cetera, like we mentioned. But you're going to mention at the end, dialysis should be considered given the patient has electrolyte imbalance. Um, and uh, uh, you're going to get a VBG prior to that as well to look at the pH of the patient.